Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our backyard. This morning, I am in my shade garden. And over the last few days, I have been noticing a lot of not only butterfly activity in my shade garden, but a lot of hummingbird activity. So at this time of the year, it is the beginning of October and we still have hummingbird migration that happens because the females and the juveniles move through and we'll have the juvenile juveniles move through all the way through the end of October right away to the early beginnings of November. My name is Crystal and I garden in zone 9 south of Houston along the Texas Gulf Coast. And we have hot and humid weather, very humid. We have heavy clay soil. And when it rains, we can typically get a lot of rain. So our gardens have to be <laughs> set up for success, for drainage, for being able to withstand two, three, four inches of rain um, in a day is not atypical if we get a deluge. So our climate and our conditions are so different from a zone nine, say in California or in New Mexico or in Arizona. They have a much more drier heat than we do and ours is hot and humid. So I thought I would come over to the shade garden today and kind of show you some of my successes and not so much successes because there's been so much activity and it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun to watch. They're either females or juveniles, hummingbirds that are over here and it's just fun. It's fun to watch. So one of the things I want to mention is why they're over here is because of the blooms. And you'll notice that I am letting my coleus bloom. And I've talked about that. Let me kind of go into the back over here. So in September, or very late August, I try to start to let my coleus bloom. And they have these tiny little blooms that pollinators really go after. And believe it or not, hummingbirds also will come down and go after coleus blooms. You wouldn't think that they would because they're such tiny little flowers. But they do. And so about this time of year, my coleus has been blooming. And of course the pollinators love that. As you know, if you follow my channel, I am a hummingbird pollinator and butterfly gardener. And so those are the type of plants that I am typically looking for. This one here happens to be a Turk's cap. It does get a little bit of morning sun. I've got a couple of them here, down here. And they have been flowering. So I grew these from seed these two from seed and thought, let me try putting it in the shade garden. I'm happy that I did because I've seen the hummingbird over here on the, the blooms are gone now, but I was getting two, three, four blooms on these back in here. The other thing that blooms very well in my shade garden, and let me get a little bit closer is my yellow salvia or salvia madrensis. And this blooms and it starts its blooming in the fall. And it has beautiful, gorgeous yellow bloom spikes like salvia do. And they can get pretty tall, <laughs> you can see here. And I just wanted to show you this update because I am very pleased with how they turned out, even though 
our hurricane barrel in the beginning of July flattened these, pretty much laid them out, did not break the stems. So I was very happy and my husband created a bamboo lattice work to help prop them up and they have responded well to this. As I look in here, these leaves are huge and large and the stalk is very much a salvia stalk. They're square, kind of turgid like a celery stalk and um but a little bit more brittle you can see that it's pliable um and that's probably why they didn't break off which i was very fortunate but the reason i grow this is because this time of year they really shine so i've been watching the hummingbirds come to the salvia and I'm very pleased to see it because this is absolutely the reason why I put this in. It is for this flower. And hummingbirds love this, this type and this shape of flower. And you can see that this does can get fairly tall. So I have coleus in this bed. I have the different, I had different types of coleus. I was really excited about it. And I have to say now going through a season with the type that I ordered, I am not the happiest with how the coleus turned out. It's certainly healthy plants, but it's not the colors that I expected. So I'm going to put at the top of the screen a video that I did earlier this year being really excited <laughs> on the coleus that I had ordered and was very hopeful to be able to create some drama in the yard. But it didn't really create drama because it just is this beautiful green foliage with some variation does have variegated leaves but not the color drama I was hoping for and then I want to share with you I had some problems with squirrels and squirrels for some reason absolutely love to dig up my caladiums and I have caladiums in containers and for some reason they think that is the absolute most wonderful thing to do and they dig and dig up the tubers and kill the plants and so some of you have suggested using spikes or I think it's called scat cat and I am going to look into that for next year because I really do love having caladiums in my garden and I love the color that they provide. We're still in the low 90s during the day so it has not really cooled down a lot for us and caladiums love that type of weather and so that was a fail for me because of the squirrels in the yard and as you know I am not a fan of squirrels because of all the damage that they do to not only the garden, but they do a lot of damage to wooden structures. So like our home, we've had to replace fascia and soffit and, you know, squirrels chew because their, their teeth do not, they continue to grow. And so they have to wear down their teeth and they do that by chewing. So squirrels do what squirrels do. And I would like them not in my yard. <laughs> But aside from that, my caladiums are gone. So that was disappointing. And my shrimp plant blooms beautifully in the spring and it will bloom periodically throughout the summer. And I'm starting to get some, you know, yellowish leaves on my plants. And I did a little experiment with my shrimp plants this year. I have them in containers and I cut one back and I did not on the other. And the one that I cut back is 
basically a really pretty good spring prune. This one is much healthier. It had a lot more growth. They both flowered very well, um, but I do like the way this one looks. So I will be cutting them both back right after our last frost and we'll see we'll see how that goes and the reason I like shrimp plants is because they have such a unique bloom on them and of course they're pollinator favorites and interestingly I have a couple of shrimp plants that are growing up from the ground so these seeded right by the shrimp plants and <laughs> I'm just going to let them go and see what happens. Right next to it, I have had this plant golly for three or four years now. And this is a dark color sweet potato vine and it grows in this little section of my shade garden. And it's kind of like a nice little ground cover. It doesn't get too big, it doesn't grow too much, but it comes back every year. And so I reward its persistence by letting it continue to stay here. So as I evaluate my coleus this time of year, I always think, golly, I should take some cuttings of the coleus that I really like. And the ones that I really like the most are the ones that I was able to see at my local garden center and the ones that I you know could see what their texture looks like what their color looks like and this one happens to be a real favorite of mine this is called river walk and I really like the texture the color the two-tone on it the variegation on the edge of the leaves I think it's really pretty. I think the bed would have performed a little better had we not had the hurricane because it did blow all of my coleus over. And here's kind of how you can see that. It blew them over, didn't break the stems, but they aren't as, aren't as pretty, right? So this was kind of a wash this year with my coleus. They are performing, they're blooming, they're doing their thing and given the circumstances I'm pretty happy I'm gonna go in the back so I had gotten some coleus that I didn't really know what to do with and I needed to get them planted and so I planted them in a fairly large container I've got three here and of these three two of them were trailing coleus and they do trail and both of the trailers I think are have grown massively have trailed really pretty and these are chocolate drop and cherry drop and they're from proven winners and I've had them back here in the back so I've not really you know observed them but they've had drip to them and they have trailed they grow tall the cherry drop has grown a lot taller than the chocolate drop the chocolate drop really does is more of a is more of a trailer and it has trailed down and so if you're looking for a coleus to go in some type of hanging basket the chocolate drop really does trail so does the cherry drop I mean the cherry drop has trailed gorgeously also and I love the colors of both of them and so because I didn't have a purpose for them um, they kind of were just back here and I let them do their thing and and they've done what they were described to do. So that made me happy. The coleus next to it is called Ruby Road. And it took a while for it to grow and establish. Um, it's not the color that I was expecting it to be. 
the drama that I was hoping for it to be. But, you know, that's okay. It's starting to flower, so I am letting it flower. And, you know, you live and learn. So I've learned if I want trailing coleuses, the two trailers that they have from Proven Winners, works really good. The coleus right next to it that I planted in the pot, this is also a unique, and I really like this one. This has a feathery texture on the outside of the leaf. I think it's really pretty with the two-tone and it showed up. So I've actually placed this in my garden um, in a couple of different places and have been really happy with its growth. This one is called Wild Lime. And even though the hurricane did um, lay down part of it, it's grown back and it's done really well. So out of all the ones that I've ordered, I've been probably the most happy with this one and then the trailers that are next to it. And then on the end, I've had my white veined Dutchman's pipe vine come back for the, what seems like the hundredth time this year. It's just a wonderful ground cover that performs and my pipe vine swallowtail caterpillars just eat this down and eat it to the ground and it comes right back and I've had pipe vine swallowtail butterflies laying eggs and I can see there's eating here let's see if there's any no nope, they're not there I'm wondering if my If my anole is, oh, there's some, has gotten to them. So I've got little, little baby caterpillars. And for the host plants that I have, the most host plants that I have in the yard, the more that I have, the more likelihood that I have the butterflies in the yard. And I did a video on that, which I will link up at the top. And because I have a couple of sources of pipe vine, and I also have the Woolly Dutchman's pipe vine that grows here, I have a good source of food for them. And they, I see pipe vine swallowtails in my yard all year long. And then next to it, I have a sprawling, absolutely out of control, coral porterweed and this has been blooming beautifully as you know I'm a huge porterweed fan and this coral porterweed has a real th has a much thicker bloom stalk and I did not cut it back this year so I wanted to show you when it has not cut back look at this thing it is absolutely huge and out of control. I will be cutting it back because I do want to keep it. And I'll probably try, try taking a cutting from it. But I have just let it grow to see what it will do. And when it does its thing, it is all over the place. So I highly recommend... For those of you that have porter weed that are going to keep your porter weed, definitely consider cutting back in right after your last spring frost. It does set it back, it does need to regrow, but it will regrow beautifully. And I've done that now with porter weed that I've had in containers and have been very happy with that. So I didn't do it with this one and I just wanted to show you what it can look like if you don't cut it back. And then the last one I'm gonna share with you cause this really isn't in the shade bed although it's kind of got a little bit of shade is this gorgeous, beautiful, very tall, giant milkweed plant and let me get a tad closer. I just love having milkweed 
for monarch butterflies because this will sustain so many butterflies. It's insane how much it can it can sustain and the butterflies just thrive on it. Well, I didn't mean to say butterflies. I meant the caterpillars. Let me go on the other side. Look at these leaves. Hmm. It's just gorgeous. I like the leaf structure and I also like how it grows. They're really, look at that. They're really unique. Well, thank you for joining me as I walked through my shade garden and took a look at the shade garden today. There have been some successes. There have certainly been some, I don't want to say failures, but things that I am not as pleased with that's happened especially when it comes to little critters taking out things in my containers that I haven't been too happy about. But all in all, this has been a very successful shade garden. Right now I've got blooms in it for the pollinators and I'll have blooms through the fall here, which they love and I love seeing them. So again, thanks for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful day today. And I hope to see you again soon.